Welcome everyone. Just two days into the Kotau murder trial, I was absolutely convinced that there was no admissible evidence upon which to convict the two accused Burmese men of the brutal murders of Hannah Withridge and David Miller. Here's a short but excellent report from the BBC's Jonah Fisher with some of my comments in text appearing at the bottom of the screen. He's not said it in court yet. He did uh, testify a little bit this morning, but when we spoke to him afterwards, uh, he went a little bit further, and it's pretty damaging uh, for the police. Uh, effectively, let me just explain that, that what evidence we're talking about here. This is the central plank uh, of the prosecution case against these two Burmese men. Effectively, uh, it's a DNA match that matches the DNA of these two men to the body of Hannah Witheridge. Uh, the body of Hannah uh, and David Miller were found uh, on the beach on the island of Koh Tao in September of last year. Now, the problem with this DNA evidence is that it was gathered by the police, it was tested by the police, and the police announced that there was a match with these two Burmese men. It has not been independently verified, and that's something which the defence case here has been pushing for and pushing for over the last few months in the run-up to this trial. Uh, and today, it's become clear that even if they do get the judge to approve the retesting of the samples, there's nothing for them to retest. The Lieutenant Colonel Somsack, who spoke to us today, said some of the samples, there just simply doesn't exist enough of the samples uh, to be retested, and others have been lost. So there is no way for, for it to be independently verified, this link between the two Burmese men and the body of Hannah Witheridge. OK, well, presumably medical experts are going to say something about this in court, of course. What else has been said in court? Well, it was a very busy day yesterday in court. They worked until 8 o'clock in the evening, which is very rare in, in Thai courts, certainly. Today, a much quieter day. A couple uh, of witnesses uh, expected to give evidence. Mainly, these are uh, uh, witnesses giving evidence as to events of that evening, the 14th of September last year, uh, who was going where, where people were moving, uh, who saw uh, Hannah Witheridge and David Miller, and who saw uh, these two Burmese men on the beach. But as I said to you, the real significant piece of evidence which the, which the police have and which the police have repeatedly used to justify their arrest of these two men because remember lots of people have said that these men may be just being made scapegoats in this crime that central piece of evidence uh, is now being cast in some pretty serious doubt because the police there's no way uh, that we can know for sure outside of the police's own work that it's actually true that this link exists now to his great credit in the very first days of the trial jonah fisher posted several very similar reports that focused on the absence of any original DNA material. In the very simplest terms, it was game over for the prosecution. Their case had collapsed. The senior staff in the BBC studio could have very easily brought in some senior barristers, some Queen's counsel, who would have explained to the viewing audience that without any of the original DNA material, the prosecution case collapses. Everything was based on there being some original DNA material that could be retested and could be verified or it could be disputed as to whether or not that matched the DNA of the accused men. The Royal Thai Police claimed that they had recovered a mixed semen sample from the body of Hannah Witheridge. If it were true, this would be a primary fact. Obtaining buckle or cheek swabs from the accused men would also be primary facts. Any conclusions that might be drawn after comparing the buckle swabs with any mixed semen sample, if it existed, would constitute secondary facts. And of course this is the problem that Jonah Fisher identified. The secondary facts can only ever be as sound as the primary facts upon which they are based. Let's now consider the evidence as a simple mathematical equation. We can assign the appropriate number between 0 and 1, with 1 representing perfection, for the validity of the primary fact and for the soundness of the police lab testing procedure. Then, by multiplying those two numbers, 
we have the value of the police evidence for DNA matches represented as a number between 0 and 1. We have no mixed semen sample, so the primary fact warrants a score of 0. In July of 2015, the soundness of the police lab testing procedure was completely unknown, so we can assign an unknown number of P. Now 0 multiplied by P equals 0. In September of 2015, the Melbourne forensic scientist Jane Torpen saw the police report that was tendered as evidence by the police and prosecutor. She described it as meaningless and said it did not prove anything. Given that the laboratory lacked the appropriate accreditation and given that Jane is an internationally recognized expert and the author of several books on the topic, we can value the previously unknown number P as zero. And as we know, zero multiplied by zero equals zero. Now within days of Lieutenant Colonel Somsack making his statements to Jonah Fisher about there being no DNA evidence, a more senior police officer contradicted him and said, oh no, we do have DNA evidence. But in fact, he was referring to not any original mixed semen sample, but rather amplified DNA, which is like a photocopy from an unknown source. And so that is actually not a primary fact and it should not be admissible. Secondly, the police were saying, look, we've uh, used up all of the original material, but in fact, a simple teaspoon is enough to provide 1,000 tests for uh, a mixed semen sample. Unfortunately, despite the absence of any real evidence, a trial dragged on for 21 long days, staggered over several months, and the young guys were convicted. It was also unfortunate that many reporters went off on irrelevant tangents, unlike Jonah Fisher, who immediately focused on the most important issue being the absence of any original mixed semen sample.